Check, check. Check this out. Welcome to Mama's Cocktail Hour. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Zeta Lisa, and welcome to After Hours. I hope you got your drink ready because I got mine. And let's jump into these juicy topics. So tonight we are going to be discussing none other than the amazing, the beautiful Kim Porter and the mystery surrounding her death. So let's jump right in. So if you guys have been living under a rock, then you do not know that Kim Porter was Diddy's baby mama, okay? And so uh, she had his kids. She also dated uh, Diddy time and time again. And she mysteriously died in 2018. And there are so many things that have been boiling within the last couple of years. And I have been listening to all of it things that I found out regarding Kim Porter. So we are going to jump right in. So Kim Porter was dating Diddy for a really long time. So she was basically his on again, off again girlfriend. And, um, you know, she been through her share of, she's been through her share of things, right? So Kim Porter, former girlfriend of Sean Diddy Combs and mother of three children with her, died in her sleep from a lung infe- infection in Los Angeles, okay? The 40, she was 47 years old. She was an actress and she was a model, was found unresponsive in her bed on November 15th of 2018. It was later determined that Porter died from a lumbar pneumonia, according to a statement by the L.A. County Medical Examiner's Office. Okay, so the manner of her death was certified as natural. So, you know, everything was supposed to be okay. Um, It looks like Porter had complained of a sore throat on November 7th, and it developed into a fever of 102 by November 12th. According to the coroner, she tested negative for influenza and strep and was treated for antibiotics, vitamins, and painkiller trotadol in the final week. Okay. It looks like, wow, they're really getting specific here. So it looks like she even had a deep tissue massage and watched movies with her family the night before going to bed at 1130 p.m. Porter's goddaughter found her in the bed at 8.30 a.m. the next day, but assumed she was asleep. It wasn't until 11.30 a.m. when housemates realized that she was not moving and called 911. There was no known history, I don't want to mess this up, okay, of drug abuse or alcoholism and no signs of trauma, is what the coroner reported. Porter had traveled to Africa in 2018, but had been back home for a month and had been feeling ill. She did not have any health complaints at the time she returned from her trip, according to the report. Um, So Porter and Grammy winning rapper and producer Combs have three children, um, a 20 year old son and uh, twin daughters. So those are the twins. Okay, so let's jump into this. Right. So those are like the specifics regarding her regarding, you know, her death and the coroner's report and all of that. But what I really want to kind of get into here, right, is what happened before that, right? I think a lot of people, especially maybe a a lot of the younger community, didn't really know Kim Porter, right? Because she was most likely, she was bigger in the in the 90s, in the early 2000s. Um, I know I saw the spread that she had on Essence Magazine when I was in college, actually. And it was dope. I mean, she was just gorgeous. Her skin color is amazing. It's so vibrant. Like, she's just, she's just a beautiful woman. So it was good to kind of see Diddy with a woman that I don't know for me and and let me know in the comments guys if you if you agree with this but to me she she added class to Diddy because Diddy back in the day he wasn't so cleaned up and polished he was like wearing big chains right he was wearing big clothes he had the hat to the side like he had this real thug image and I feel like Kim Porter like elevated him drop a comment if you agree, because I really do feel like Kim Porter added some like some level of like maturity to Diddy 
And I think that's why so many people loved her is because she was like this person that she just exuded class, right? She was a very classy woman. So shout out to Kim Porter. But up like uh, in the early 2000s and everything that was going on, she even alluded in an Essence Magazine interview that she knew about J-Lo, okay? She saw... Diddy out there in those streets with J-Lo, just like how we did. She seen it in the tabloids. And at the time she was like, okay, I'm just going to wait for him to tell me. So it looks like he finally was open with her and told her and she got her stuff. She got her kids and she got the F up out of town. Okay. She was like, I ain't playing with the mess. You want to be with somebody else? No problem. But I'm a mom. I need to worry about me and I need to be sane for these kids. And I'm just going to go my own way. So she did it. She packed up the whole entire house and left. And, you know, she definitely made her mark and she stood her ground. So Kim Porter was a woman, from my opinion, and I didn't know her. I didn't have the pleasure of ever meeting her. But from what I have gathered and what I have researched, she is a woman of class. Okay. She was smart. She was savvy. She's been in the game. She knew how to. She knew how to play the game and she knew what she had to do. So let's jump forward to what they're saying this tell all book was. So people are alleging that Kim Porter was writing a tell all book. Okay. And so with this tell all book, of course, she was going to expose Diddy for a lot of the things that he had been doing, you know, the gay rumors, um, having sex with celebrity men, um, she was going to expose um, the Tupac and Biggie thing. You know, come on, guys. If you live in a no rock, you know that, you know, the Millie Millie put a Millie in the head. You know, come on now. Let's be real. You you know what's going on, right? She was going to expose these things. And people are alleging that Diddy did not like that. Actually, some deep dive news that has not been confirmed, it has not been confirmed, is stating that there is a conversation that both Diddy and Kim Porter were having where they were arguing and it is recorded. Now, again, guys, this information isn't confirmed and it is alleged. However, I'm just letting you know what they saying in these streets. OK, they are saying that there was a conversation that was recorded between Diddy and Kim Porter that stated that, you know, they were going back and forth and Diddy was like, you know, you better not put out any information. And Kim Porter actually said that the information, um, you know, was something that he was already put that he was already putting out himself. And she actually referenced and again, guys, this is alleged. She referenced that Diddy himself put out a song with Black Rob called Muscle Game. And in this song, okay, what Diddy does is he himself says something like, you don't want to mess with me. I'll put a milli on your head and delete your, you and your whole family. Like, guys, I am here for the tea. Hit the like button, subscribe, get you some, get you some wine. Because Mama's Cocktail Hour After Hours is giving you the scoop, okay? So, it is said that there was actually an audio recording that her family may or may not have. And again, this is all alleged, not confirmed, in which they were arguing. And Kim Porter said, hey, listen, why are you upset that people are writing these books? You yourself even came out in a song stating that you've done some of these things. So, you know, I had to go find the song, get on Apple Music and stream that song really quickly. And if you guys do your due diligence, go look for the song uh, with Black Rob called Muscle Game, okay? And in that song, you will hear where Diddy kind of does his little ad libs thing, right? Because he's an ad lib guy. We all love him for that. He'd be like, take that, take that. So he did an ad lib where he was like, hey, you don't want to mess with me. I put a million on your head and I delete your whole family. Like some something to that measure. Go check it out. Do your research. But in they are referencing guys that 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 argument was actually recorded. Now, this is all alleged, but 
her family has these documents and it said that these documents were supposed to be going to the feds. That's neither confirmed or denied. I don't know. I'm just letting you know what these streets is saying. Okay. So people are alleging that, yes, she was putting out a tell-all book and some of the information in there was too hot, too heavy for Diddy and he was not having it. He sends came out and he put out this post and I want to share it with you guys because this is a guys again it's alleged this is allegedly Kim Porter's book and this is some of the specifics that they said were happening and 50 actually put this out on his Instagram page for obviously or anything like that but I've been in the business and been around the business well, some of the things in the book cover Diddy's gay relationships footage of those encounters the men he slept with STDs Diddy giving Usher an STD and the explosive encounter between Diddy I'm and Usher. I'm a big SVU fan and this is why this after hours thing is so is so down my alley because I love a good mystery right I love solving a good mystery so what I thought is interesting and Actually, my sister just asked me a question. She goes, well, why, right? Why would he do it? So let's be fair, right? And let's throw out the facts. So when someone is murdered or something like that happens, there has to be motive, right? What is your, what is your reasoning? What is your reasoning behind doing something like that, right? So let's check if there's motive there. So Kim Porter has been with Diddy since probably the 90s on and off so she has information now we know that diddy drew and we're starting to know now with everything that came out with the new cassie um you know lawsuit that diddy has thrown some really insane parties he has a really big sexual appetite right he does some things that are strange for some change in the bedroom so we know come on now we know that if she is his baby mama and she was going, you know, she was in the bed with him. She knows some of these things, guys. She does. And I love that Jean Deal and Jean Deal is Diddy's, she, uh, Diddy's um, security guard, right? Jean Deal came out and basically said that a lot of the stuff that Cassie was talking about, Kim was going through those things too, and I thought that that was such an eye opener. Like it really started to shed light right back on this topic. Like people probably forgot about Kim Porter. She died in 2018. No, res no disrespect to her because, you know, her, like I said, she, she was a very beautiful soul. So I'm sure her essence still kind of just lingers around because she's such a beautiful soul. But yes, People are like, well, what happened to Kim Porter? Now that all these things are coming out with Cassie, people are now saying and starting to ask the question, was Kim Porter's death really natural, you know? Or did, did he have a motive? Do you think he has motive? So if if Kim Porter was putting out a tell-all book and did he found out about it, do we feel that Diddy has the courage, he has he has the power to put out Kim Porter. Like, I don't know, guys. You guys let me know. She was a great mom. Her friends are actually saying that, you know, she traveled to Africa in 2018, right before she, era, she passed away. Um, you know, Kimora Lee Simmons said that she was gone too soon. Like, the specifics regarding this case really have everybody in an eerie mood. So, you know, going back to what I was saying, right, is was there motive? Absolutely there was motive, right? Who would want someone to put out their deepest, darkest secrets in a tell-all book? And someone as credible as Kim Porter, she had never went out in the media and said anything bad about Diddy. That's the same thing that actually I would say about Cassie too, right? Cassie has never went out in the media and said anything bad about Diddy. I was actually just watching some interviews with her, but they brought up some of these photos that we all know now that Diddy probably was exposing out there, right? Allegedly. Um, so 
she brought out these photos in a um, in an interview and she said, hey, we're getting to the bottom of it. So she herself was not even snitching on Diddy. None of these women were ever bold enough to confront Diddy. So. Is it is it hard to think that they were scared, that they knew that this man had that much power and that much control? And if they even even disrespected him in any type of way that they needed to be living, watching their back every second. I mean, it's not far fetched. Right. So is there motive? There is now. The I guess the next key is right, is where is all this evidence where is that original coroner report? And everybody's speaking, like there's whispers like, oh, Kamora Lee is helping the family and Kamora Lee is going, I mean, Kamora Lee has been silent, right? The only thing that I've seen that Kamora Lee has put out is you reap what you sow. As soon as Cassie's complaint came out, she went on her story and she left that. Real subtle jabs, right? Definitely subtle jabs, but Kim was her friend. That was her girl. I can see why, you know, if somebody, ha if somebody passed away that, that prematurely and you knew what this person was capable of, you probably be scared too. You probably be looking around like, oh no, ain't something is not right. So, you know, there is so much, so much developing things with Kim Porter and, it looks like, you know, everyone's saying, oh, her case may be opened up again. That's all speculation right now. We don't know. Let's let's keep it a buck. But with all the new Cassie information, it is it is going to be interesting to see how things develop and what information did really Cassie have? And did Cassie share the, any of that information? Is there going to be a criminal complaint from Cassie in the future. People are now speculating that she did have a California uh, lawsuit out there too. Is that lawsuit criminal? We know about the Adult Survivors Act, right? We know that all these women who didn't have the opportunity to come forward in the past are coming forward now because of that Adult Survivors Act that actually expired on Thanksgiving. But that does not mean that we may not have women who experienced something two years ago or one year ago, where the statute of limitation hasn't left, right? So there's all these big gaps. But like I've been telling everybody regarding this subject is when there's smoke, there's fire, right? When someone has been accustomed to grooming women and doing these and doing these type of freak offs, because that's what they were called. That's what Cassie alleges in her lawsuit. She she alleges that Diddy would refer to these encounters where he was making her have sex with big black blanks. Um, and he would watch and diddle himself. <laughs> um, he is a let they are alleging that, you know, he would call those freak offs or FOs, right? So Cassie was forced or co coerced, am I saying that correctly? Coerced uh, to do these freak offs, right? And they were weekly. And what I thought was interesting is someone had actually brought up that she even stated in the lawsuit so that some of these freak offs would last 72 hours. Like what? 72 hours having sex? And I'm pretty sure that this type of level of sex, like she even referenced in the actual lawsuit. And this should, this just broke my heart for all women all over the place. This broke my heart. She said that she would actually throw up prior to these freak offs because of just the, the, the trauma that she knew that she was going to endure sometimes for 72 hours. Like that's three days of having sex. Like, did we just kind of skim over that really quickly? Like, come on, let me know in the comments, guys. Please hit the like, subscribe so that you can get alerted when this content is up and running because after hours got some shit for y'all. We got some shit for y'all. Like 72 hours having sex? Like, no wonder why she said she had to have like IV infusions after because the amount of drugs that were in her system, the amount of freaking 
just dehydration that she was probably experiencing with three days just probably having sex, sweating. Um, you know all the fluids that be coming in and out your body when you're having sex. Like it is, it is not a pretty picture. And to be having that with male sex workers, like, are we not like do are we did that not settle? Drop in the comments if you guys read that too. It didn't sit well with you. 72 hours having sex sometimes. And then he was recording these freak offs. Like we got to give it up to my girl, Cassie. Like let's give it up to Cassie for being a dope ass mama and being real. And for everybody who said, oh, you know, I wish she would have let it a little longer. I wish she would have done this. I wish she would have done that. What nobody seems to understand is Cassie done opened the floodgates for all you women out there who have ever been hurt. She has opened the floodgates for anybody who has experienced SA. And why do I say that? She was smart enough to understand that not only did this information need to go out, and I'm pretty sure that she withheld a lot of information. I'm sure. I'm sure. Because I'm thinking them freak offs, he wasn't just doing that to himself. There was some other, there was some, there was some participation, allegedly, right? There was some participation there, I'm sure. So she she was smart. Think about it. You're going up against a billionaire. Everybody's like, oh, it's a money grab. It's a money grab. Of course it's a money grab, guys. If you was doing freak offs for 72 hours straight, you dehydrated, you was probably getting, you was, God knows if, 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 if you were having multiple guys all at once, God knows what you running trains. God knows what it was, right? But it was horrible. It was traumatic. I hate that people want to sit here sometimes and tell you what they think you should have. Well, you know, it's a money grab. What? Yes, absolutely. Should she not want the person who made her go through misery to pay her back for those things monetarily and also have to pay in embarrassment and shame too? Can she not have that as a victim? I mean, people clout chase all the time. People do something strange for some change all the time. But because she's actually coming out with allegations about somebody who put her through something super traumatic for years, it's a money grab? Or she didn't wait to your liking? Or she should have not done it this way? I, like, that whole victim shaming thing, I hate it. Because regardless if a woman comes out tomorrow, five years from now, 10 years from now, does that make their story less valid because of time? Do you understand that everybody handles trauma differently? Everybody, some people have fight or flight with trauma, right? Some people either freeze and try to ignore it and block it out, or some people deal with it heads on. It all depends on how you deal with trauma. It all depends with how you deal with something traumatic in your life happening, right? Are you that person that's going to get up and fight through those emotions and go through your day and day? Or are you going to be someone who cries in, cries in your sheets for weeks on end? I mean, let me tell you something. I've been there both, you know? So I hate that we do that when it comes to people that have been through trauma. We like to poke holes in their story and I always say on my platform that I am completely fair. Like I have grown up with, I have four brothers and I have been around a lot of sketchy women. Okay. I have like my brothers have dated some sketchy women in their lives. So I know what it is to understand both sides of the story. Right. And I always like to be fair because even with Diddy and this atrocity, I think that he still should have, you know, his due process, whatever that due process is. I mean, in regards to um, any new claims that come, right? Because people are suggesting now he's like on his fourth lawsuit. One is indirectly not towards him. It's towards his old, um, I believe like his his old president of Bad Boy Entertainment, Harvey Pierre. So that one is like an indirect, but he does have three current lawsuits, right? So these things do happen, are happening in real time. And Kim Porter is really at the center of this or 
is in the beginning of this. And so as things develop with Kim Porter, just know that I'm going to be bringing you the after hour tea. You're going to be getting it right here on Mama's Cocktail Hour. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe so that you can be notified when there's any new content. Hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think. Do you feel like Kim Porter's death was of natural causes or do you think nah zeta you freaking crazy she was murdered so we gonna get back to this and there's definitely gonna be a part two to this series so if you like my content and if you want to come back to after hours be sure to hit that notification button and subscribe to the channel so that you can get more videos like this love you guys much thank you for coming after hours with me and until the next time See you. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Zeta Lisa. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification button so you can be notified when there's a new video.